Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for those that are watching on live stream. Uh, those of you trying to catch us on live stream, if you type in Stephen Benoon, you should bring you right to our channel there. That's uh, D-E-N-O-O-N. Um, we're looking at a probably one of the most profound prophetic uh, impacts that I have seen uh, here this month, even to me greater than the prophecy that God showed me in the book of Micah chapter 7 uh, recently that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Syria would become desolate of, of its own population as a result of the, the conflict within. Well, now the Lord has actually revealed to me uh, in another prophecy, incredible information, uh, and, and I, I could only encourage uh, people like uh, world leaders, in fact, that, that would like to know who is actually buying the oil from ISIS uh, there, and where is it actually being transported to, where is it being trucked to, uh, how is this all happening? It's in the Bible. All the players are in the Bible. And, and just by His wonderful grace, He's revealed that to me. Let's start, I want to start off here. This was on RT News here, uh, and, and I want to just kind of start this off. Hopefully, they'll actually show the, uh, the, the, the subtitles here. I'm not sure if they did or did not, but let me just kind of move it a little bit forward. Yes, um, <clears throat> this is where Vladimir Putin says the U.S. is the one that actually put uh, or, or created ISIS to begin with there in the Middle East. So we know the U.S. is, is, very, is very well famous for toppling uh, 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 governments around the world. That was brought out by one of their own former uh, CIA director of operation, uh, John Stockwell, who actually admitted this, that this was true, and, uh, and said that they go in there, they get the radical people in the country, and they, they, they cause an, uh, an upheaval. Now, it's also been suggested, too, that Israel has been behind this, uh, not just the U.S. and the creation of ISIS, but also that Israel has been behind it. And, and lately, uh, there was another situation uh, just recently where a commander, a, uh, an Israeli uh, a commander, of course, it was first reported that it was an Israeli general who was actually captured uh, during that, uh, during one of the operations there in Iraq as part of the ISIS group there. Uh, Israel supposedly stated later that it was a colonel, it was not a general, uh, but nonetheless, the Mossad is definitely working in, uh, in, in directing uh, these ISIS forces uh, in cahoots with the United States. And, and I can, as far as from the, the standpoint maybe of Israel, I might understand a little bit why they've done this, because they want to destabilize the different regions around uh, Israel in order to keep from having to deal with them in a direct combat or direct war. So what better way for Israel than to, do, than to destabilize the region or the country to have its own conflict within? Uh, I don't say that that's the right way to do things by no means. I'm just simply stating I can see why Israel would be a part of this. But it's actually a much bigger picture than that altogether. We are definitely seeing um, uh, prophecy being fulfilled. Now, the article here was uh, says uh, Israeli general captured in Iraq uh, confesses to Israel ISIS uh, of a, of, confesses to Israel ISIS coalition is what he says there. There's a strong cooperation between the Mossad and ISIS, the top military commander, Israeli advisors helping the organization laying out strategic and military plans guiding them in the battlefield. This is what the article actually st stated there. This is on Veterans Today. You can easily Google this information and pull this up for yourself. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we know that right uh, just recently, uh, we've seen that the French actually bombed some of the supply line or some of the oil refineries and places like that that ISIS was, was using. We brought some of this information out to you in recent, in recent broadcasts there, uh, showing that uh, as, as, as the French were bombing the, uh, the different oil depots there to try to stop, quote unquote, uh, those that are supporting these, uh, this illegal buying of the cheap oil from ISIS, uh, and of course, in different uh, Western media articles, they blame that it's actually Basra al-Assad, the president of Syria, uh, in cahoots with Turkey and other countries there that are buying the oil. They failed to mention, the United States uh, Western media failed to, to bring up the other accusations that's been against the U.S. 
uh, the United Kingdom, as well as Germany and even France, that these countries also have been involved in buying this oil. And of course, some of these articles do implicate Basra al-Assad as part of this, uh, this conspiracy, as well as even Turkey uh, being one of the places that the oil is actually uh, sent to. Now that's what everybody has been thinking, at least from what we can gather there. And now uh, the French, uh, the, the, the Paris was attacked by uh, a huge, well-orchestrated uh, uh, Arabic Islamic State um, uh, coordinated effort there that came into Paris, France there and, and, and attacked them, uh, killing over 120 civilians there. Uh, very sad situation for Paris indeed, and, and from what I've just heard even today before coming on the news broadcast this evening, there's been yet another bombing in Paris, uh, and supposedly from what I've heard thus far, only one person has died in that particular explosion there. Uh, we stated in our own broadcast here on Israeli News Live that uh, we, it looked to us that it was actually a retaliation for France bombing the oil fields there that ISIS has there, and of course we can certainly see some of the, some of the behind the scenes on this because uh, they would do this in an effort uh, of revenge. But the thing that bothered me is how could it be coordinated so rapidly unless those that are actually a part of the creation of ISIS were planning this all along? And for what purpose? That's to get boots on the ground, to get a NATO coalition together, to come together to put boots on the ground in Syria for the ultimate goal eventually, and that is to come against Israel. See, God is, God is directing the entire thing to begin with because we know how biblical prophecy is going to play out. All the nations of the world are going to turn against the Jewish people eventually in the end. Uh, so therefore, I cannot help, and I know there's already been some suggestion out there that yes, there has been a conspiracy with, uh, with some of the U.S. Uh, people behind this. Of course, President Obama would never say that. Uh, and, and, and of course, we deplore the whole idea to begin with. But it seems to me that the reason why France was chosen was because you have more different nationalities there in Paris, France, a very hot spot place to be. And of course, more people from around the world have died as a result. We had Americans, we had uh, all different kind of Europeans from, uh, from different parts of the, United, uh, the European Union that died in this, um, etc. I haven't even looked at the list myself. I've just heard some of the reports. So it causes other nations to come in. And now France is cooperating uh, somewhat, or at least Russia has offered the hand to cooperate with France in the attack against ISIS. But the whole real issue is, though, is the United Nations, NATO, their allies, they don't want Russia being in there and getting the piece of the pie before they get their hands on it because they all want the oil to begin with. That's what the whole issue is all about. So now today, Russia has also went on a major bombing spree, hitting the tankers. These are the, these are the vehicles that are transporting the crude that comes out of the ground to the different locations wherever they may be taking it. Now, the question is, is where are they taking it? And what is the prophecy? I'm sure you guys are on the edge of your seat right now. This is biblical prophecy. And I think by God's grace, I can tell you every player, and it'll also show you the hour you are living in. Hosea the prophet has actually prophesied of what we're seeing in the news right now. Let's take a look at it. Let's go right on over to the book of Hosea here so you can get an idea of what I'm speaking about. It says in chapter 12 of Hosea, Ephraim compasseth me about with lies. Now this, is, this is the God of heaven speaking about different, different people here, and you're going to find out who Ephraim really is. Many biblical scholars try to put Ephraim as, uh, as Europe or, or the United Kingdom, Britain, things like that. I don't believe that's correct. Uh, and, and I would not have said that until now, but I'll show you why, and you're going to see. Ephraim compassed me about with lies, the house of Israel with deceit, and Judah is yet wayward towards God and towards the Holy One who is faithful. Okay, now, let's real quick look at this one part right there. Judah is yet wayward towards God and towards the Holy One who is faithful. The Holy One is the Mashiach, the Messiah, and they still don't believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, other than a handful of Jews like myself that do believe that He's the Messiah. But as a whole, as our nation, 
that we just have not accepted. We're wayward. We're yet wayward towards God and towards the Holy One who is faithful. Now, Jews would say today, we're not, we're not wayward towards God. But as a nation we are, as a, as, a, as a political nation, we are wayward away from God. Now I agree, many of the Orthodox community, very faithful to God, trying to believe with all of their heart. I thank God for that. Now, before I get sidetracked on that, let's go into verse 2. This is the clincher for prophecy. Ephraim striveth after wind, and followeth after the east wind. That shows that Ephraim then literally lives in the west, but he's coming towards the east. All day he multiplieth lies and desolation. Did not Vladimir Putin call him, uh, has called the United States an, a, an imperialistic nation? All right? And it's true. I mean, I'm an American. I love my country. I have always believed in standing for freedom, and I've always believed that we were fighting for freedom, only to find out, are we really fighting for freedom or not? Well, we definitely have been making the world desolate everywhere we go. Now, if I were to say, like, for example, Iraq, were we there to liberate the Kurds that were being gassed by Saddam Hussein? That's a good thing. Did we liberate Kuwait? Yes, we did. When we liberated the Kuwaiti people, they were ecstatic about it. All right, that's a good thing to liberate these people here. But did we have to go in and desolate the country? Okay, now that's just a thought. I'm just sharing this with you because I want you to see what God says about it. Ephraim striveth after wind. Actually, the word in Hebrew that's used there is, is uh, ro'e ruach. Ephraim ro'e ruach. The ro'e is like a shepherd. He's shepherding after the wind. You know, that's why they, they translate that striveth, or I think in King James they use the word feedeth. You know, the whole point is, is he, he's, 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 trying to, he's trying to get that wind. He's trying to get a hold of it. And he followed that through the east wind. All day long he multiplieth lies and desolation, and they make a covenant with Assyria, and oil is carried into Egypt. Oh my gosh, friends. What, what covenant did they make with Assyria? With the rebels. They, they made the covenant, not with Basra al-Assad, not with the president of the country, but they have gone in there, they've created ISIS. See, Vladimir Putin was right. The United States created ISIS. That's true. And they created ISIS, they made a covenant with the, with the people. They've also, not only did they create ISIS and went and armed them, but then they turned around and they, they also backed the Free Syrian Army. See, they, what have they done? They have made a covenant with them and oil is carried into Egypt. ISIS is the one that's pumping the oil out, and everybody thinks that it's going into Turkey, but according to the Word of God, that oil is going into Egypt. You're going to find out why. Now, any of you guys that are out there listening, listen to me. I, I, I beg you, search for me. See if we can find a connection. I tried. I didn't have enough time to see if I could, you know, I was looking for a, a, any kind of news article that might show that they were smuggling it into Egypt. I've not found that as of yet, but I, I do believe it's going, to be, it's going to come out eventually. It is going to come out because that's where the oil is actually going to. I, I have found articles where it says Egypt sent oil into uh, uh, Syria in order to help uh, uh, Assad to be able to battle the rebels there. But you have to remember, Syria and Egypt are very close allies. So this is a major deal we're talking about right here. Now, it doesn't end there. All right, now I'm going to, I'm going to take you. So, just hold your place there. Don't get too upset with me yet now because you're going to find out who Ephraim is, biblically speaking. I, I believe that God has shown me where that is. Let's go on down. The Lord has also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways and according to his doings. Will he recompense him? In the womb he took, took his brother by the heel and by his strength he strove with him, excuse me, strove with a godlike being. I... <laughs> Okay, who, who, who did he strive with? Esau. And what did Hosea say? He was like a godlike being, see? Uh, right here. Sarah et Elohim. Now, by the way, that's actually a prince. See? He was a prince with God, strove with, with a godlike being. So he strove with an angel and prevailed. He kept and made a supplication unto him in Bethel, and he would find him, and there he would speak with us. Now, going back to the in the womb, 
In, in the womb, he took his brother by the heel, and by his strength he strove with a godlike being. So interesting. By the way, now the godlike being, though, I do not, this, this is the, 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 the one that he wrestles with there after he's a grown man. But when he took his brother by the heel, that being Esau, that's who he's, that's who he's still battling to this day. And that's Rome, because Rome is the one that's behind all of this. But anyways, we move on. It says here, so he strove uh, with the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him at Bethel, which is the house of God, would find him, and there he would speak with us. But the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord is his name. Therefore turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and justice, and wait for thy God continually. As for the trafficker, the balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. The trafficker. That's those that are trafficking all that oil out of, the, out, of, out of Assyria. And Ephraim said, Surely I am become rich. I have found me wealth in all my labors. They shall find in me no iniquity that, that, were, uh, iniquity that were sin. Uh, this is what you had, you had the, whole, I, the whole purpose the U.S. wants to be there in the Middle East to begin with is to get rich from the oil. That's why we went into Iraq. We didn't go into Iraq because of Saddam Hussein gas and his people or having massive uh, 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 you know, uh, weapons of mass destruction. But we, we have helped uh, Iran to, 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 to uh, accommodate that. In fact, Israel on Israel National News Today is saying that Iran has actually done secret uh, testing already of a nuclear bomb underground just this past week and has violated the, the, uh, the agreement that was reached with Iran over, their, uh, over the uh, nuclear deal. Verse 10, But I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt. I will yet again make thee to well in tents, as in the days of the appointed season. Oh, friends, this, this is not good. This is not good. And, and I can only assume what that is to dwell in tents there. Is that going to be because the U.S. is going to take a severe hit and the people end up no longer being in houses, being having to flee? He says, I have also spoken unto the prophets and I have multiplied visions and by the ministry of prophets have I used similitudes. If Gilead be given to iniquity, become altogether vanity and Gil Gilgal that they sacrifice unto Bullock, yea, their altars shall be as a heap in the furrows of the field. And Jacob fled into the field of Aram and Israel served for a wife and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel up out of Egypt and by a prophet was he kept. Ephraim have provoked most bitterly, therefore shall his blood be cast upon him, and his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. All right, now that's the judgment of all this. But going back, let's quickly just recount count it again. May, the main, two main verses here are verse 1, verse 2, and you can even go into verse 3. Ephraim compasseth me about with lies. That's all he does. And the house of Israel with deceit. All right, and Judah is yet wayward towards God and towards the Holy One, who is faithful. All right, so Ephraim, the, you know, not only does he constantly compass God about with lies and the house of Israel with deceit. That's an interesting one if you think about it. There, and Judah is yet wayward towards God and towards the Holy One, who is faithful. In other words, they still don't recognize their Messiah. Ephraim striveth after wind and followeth after the east wind. All the day he multiplied lies and desolation, constantly multiplied, especially in the Middle East. And they make a covenant with Assyria and oil is carried into Egypt. So now you know where the oil is going to. It's being taken there and then being sold to Germany and other countries there. And I'm sure some of it does go through Turkey. But God has identified that it's going through Egypt. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to, his, according to his doings and he will recompense him. Now, quickly, let's jump over to chapter 7 of Hosea. I want to prove to you here who Ephraim really is. When I would heal Israel, then is the iniquity of Ephraim uncovered. You see, Israel came back to her homeland in 1948. Uh, we can go all day long into the political situation in Israel. I realize we can say, okay, the Rothschilds helped build it. All the evil, regardless of what you want to put on that, it's just like the case the Egyptians were the ones that actually financed the Jews when they left uh, Egypt. God put it on their heart to give them all the gold and all the silver and everything that they would have need of. But did, did, did the Israelis pervert that? Yes, they made a golden cap in the, in the, in the wilderness. 
but it wasn't the fact that God didn't give them that to go make a golden calf. But there were some godly people that made it there. In fact, God had to kill off the whole generation except Joshua and Caleb. But still, they finally made it to Israel, and a godly nation began. All right, now, the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood. And the thief entereth in, the troop of robbers maketh a raid without. Let them not say to their heart, I remember all their wickedness. No, no, uh, now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. <laughs> Is that not true? I mean, I've always said, or excuse me, I've always heard in the United States, there's an old joke I used to hear a lot when I was younger, over, when I was over, living in the United States, and that was, if a politician's lips are moving, he's lying. A lot of truth in that, isn't there? All right? So he says, they make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. Because they'll, they'll do anything. They're all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker who ceaseth to disturb from the kneading of the dough until it be leavened. Adulterers. Isn't that interesting that he calls them all adulterers? Do you know that over in the book of Revelation, it speaks about that the great whore was a mother of harlots. That's, the, that's all these different churches out here that I'm not talking about the people in the church. Now, my friends, the people understand that, but that's all these churches out here that have joined right back up into to Mama Rome there, and they're nothing but a bunch of harlots, an adulteress. That's exactly what they are. And that's what the nation here is. They're adulterers. All right? Now, let's go on down. Verse 5, On the day of our king, the princes make him sick with the heat of the wine, and he stretch out his hand with scorners, for they have made ready their heart like an oven while they, while they lie in wait. Their baker sleepeth all the night, and the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. They are all hot as an oven, and devour their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. Did you see that? No, there, watch what he says. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. You see, in other words, what is, what is the prophet saying here? In your judicial meetings, the name of Jesus Christ is never mentioned again. There's no politician, no president, especially presidents, Oh, they might say, well, we believe, I believe in God. Yes, yeah, so, you know, George Bush also said that, that when he looked into the eyes of Pope Benedict, I see God. That's your God. But no one mentions his name. See, he says, there is none among them that calleth unto me. And we're talking about the politician. Ephraim, he mixeth himself with the peoples. Ephraim has become a cake not turned. And yes, they do. They mix in with every nation in the world. Like Putin, even I have to give the man credit. He's right. He says, we have what? I think now three bases worldwide. The United States has, it's got to be a hundred bases worldwide, if not more. They're everywhere. It's unbelievable. Strangers have devoured his strength and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, and he knoweth it not. They've devoured, yes. How did they devour, devour his strength? Because we have spread out all over the world. Economically, totally desolate. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his face, but they have not returned unto the Lord their God, nor sought him for all of this. See, it, the political part of Israel is just like the political part of the United States. And Ephraim has become like a silly dove without understanding. They call into Egypt, they go to Assyria. That's exactly the way it happened. First they go into Egypt, topple the country over there, and then they go into Assyria. Make a covenant with the rebels over there. Get them all excited, stir it up in order to get the oil real cheap and make a whole lot of money off of it. Do you know how much money these all rich people and the uh, billionaires over there are making off of this oil that's being sold for only 20, 15 to $20 a barrel in the United States and you're still paying, what, 4 or $5 a gallon on gas? They're making billions off of you. 
and the rest of the world too. Even as they go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation hath been, hath been made to hear. That, that is the most prophetic words I have heard in a long time. He says, even as they go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I will chastise them. You see, because it's, it, the United States is a godly nation, or supposed to be a godly nation, but we've allowed all kinds of nonsense to get into political offices. I'm talking about not just the president, I'm talking about governors and everything else. There's, and, and even the best of them will not say the name of Jesus Christ publicly. It's not politically correct. And what do you say? I will chastise them as their congregation hath been made to hear. In other words, the preachers have been prophesying and telling you guys that it's coming. We're going to pay. America is going to pay for its evils that it's doing as their congregation have been made to hear. Woe unto them, for they have strayed from me. God knows that America was a godly nation at one time. But he says, you've strayed from me. Destruction unto them, for they have transgressed against me. Shall I then redeem them, seeing they have spoken lies against me? Now that one right there, let me tell you something right there. There's a lot of people who don't like some of the things that I preach on because when I get, down, when I get serious with, with the Word of God, I'll tell you just like it is. I have no time for playing games. I have no time for playing church. I have no time for, for the nonsense. Now you got to admit, the Word of God has been covered up like crazy. Even the book of Enoch, and, and, and I'm going to pull this one up right now because many of you guys are aware of this anyway. In the book of Enoch, Enoch says something that will absolutely startle you. And um, let me see where I actually put this at. It's not right there. Uh, Enoch, mm, here it is right here, Bible folder. It's under that. The book of Enoch in the Dead Sea Scrolls was part of the biblical canon. Many people, many of you guys listening believe the book of Enoch to be part of the Word of God. If you go to chapter 98 and chapter 99, I want to read to you something right here. Because God is accusing, He's putting an accusation here that's pretty strong here, and I think you should be aware of this. Because I've quoted many times Jeremiah 8.8. 8. Uh, well, the, 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 the lying pen of the scribe has turned it into a lie. But let me, let me show you what, let me show you exactly here what Enoch said. He prophesied this long before that. He says, Woe to you who, who love deeds of iniquity. Why do you hope for good for yourselves? Know that, uh, know that you will be given into the hands of the righteous and they will cut your throats and kill you and will not have mercy on you. Woe to you who rejo rejoice in the distress of the righteous for graves will not be dug for you. Woe to you who declare the words of righteous empty for you will have no hope of life. Woe to you who write lying words and the words of the impious for they write their lies so that men may hear and continue their folly and they will not have peace but will die a sudden death. Watch what it says next in chapter 99. It's the whole thing just continuing on. Woe to you who do impious deeds and praise and honor lying words. You will be destroyed and will not have a good life. Woe to you who alter the words of truth and they distort the eternal law and count themselves as being without sin. They will be trampled underfoot on the ground. That's what it says. All right. Now, I can't I can't sit here and just baby things around, friends. We're looking, even the United States in prophecy here, Ephraim. And I, I went rapidly to look to see what other scholars have said. Most scholars believe that Ephraim is, uh, is Great Britain and that Manasseh represents the United States. But what, everything I'm seeing here is clearly the U.S., you know. And, of course, I know that England was, you know, it was definitely made by uh, the uh, England. It did make the, the U.S. there. Anyway. It says, Woe unto them, for they have strayed from me. Destruction to them, for they have transgressed against me. Shall I then redeem them, seeing they have spoken lies against me? And they have not cried unto me with their heart, though they wail upon their beds. They assemble themselves for corn and wine. They rebel against me. Though I have trained and strengthened their arms, yet do they de devise evil against me. Mm. 
You know why he says they devise evil against me? Because the U.S. is going to take part in a battle against Israel in the very coming years, I would assume, you know, maybe a year or two, three years down the road, they're going to come against Israel. Because the Bible's already said the entire world will come against them. And God says right here, though I have trained and strengthened their arms, yet do they devise evil against me. They return, but not upwards. They are become like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. Friends, we are living in a serious time. And I'll just go back one more time in closing here with this news here. We see that they're trying to stop the supply of oil that ISIS has benefited from for years now. It's been covered up. Now they're trying to accuse Assad and Turkey. Vladimir Putin says there's 40 nations involved in buying this oil. 40 nations. See, Putin is bringing this out because when they put sanctions on Russia, it did a lot of damage to Russia. They can only get $50 a barrel. And with all this oil being sold here on the black market, Putin doesn't get to sell as much oil right now. And he's losing a lot of money as a result. But according to this right here, God tells us exactly where it's at. He says, Ephraim, verse 2, striveth after wind and followeth after the east wind. In the day he multiplieth lies and desolation, and they make a covenant with Assyria, and oil is carried into Egypt. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment. I guess I should have said that at the beginning. So, anyway, God bless you guys. Those of you watching the live stream, God bless you. We love you so much. Thank you for being a part here. If you believe in this kind of ministry, this type of news broadcast, and you want to stand with us and support this, we do need your help in bringing these messages out. It takes a lot of work in order to bring these things together. And it's only by God's grace that we're able to do it. And because many of you that are willing to stand with us, we thank you for your support and help. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. There's a place you can donate there. Or IsraelReturns.com. Uh, we have on IsraelReturns.com, we have our physical address in Europe if you want to mail us to that. Show them.